Hello and welcome to the first episode of The Central Novella. The Central Novella is a podcast where we, Alicia Crow and Izzy Martin, will talk to teachers, students, and staff and get book recommendations for your reading list. Some books can be found in the library, and if you want a book ordered, check with our lovely librarian, Miss Martin. If you prefer ebooks, we'll recommend those as well. If you have a book you want to recommend, contact us via Miss Martin or our school emails. In this first episode, we're going to talk to Miss Broussard about her favorite book. So, can you tell us the title and the author? Uh, the name of the book is We Were the Lucky Ones by Georgia Hunter, and I read it last year. Mm -hmm. So, what's it about? Um, it's about a family. It's about the Kirk family and their survival and perseverance through the Holocaust. Hmm. Uh, so, why do you like it? It's very rare that a book makes me cry or like respond and laugh and really have those emotions on the outside and then I'm not just like, you know, just mentally like intrigued by it. And I cried three times during this book because I was just so overwhelmed and overjoyed and happy for them. Um, it took me by surprise. I didn't expect that ending. Um, it's also based on a true story. So that made it even more impactful. I think that historical fiction is really important for us to discover these stories, to not let history um, disappear into the void. That, you know, these struggles are real and people can sympathize with that even in, in so many different ways about the love and the connections that we make with one another. That's, that's really that's really good. So, um, can you tell us more about the book? Yeah, it follows different uh, family members. Um, and so the chapters rotate between them. Um, it's, it also takes place in different countries, which I thought was interesting. Like some family members are in South America. Others are trying to get to the United States. Others are in Poland, stuck there. Um, some are in Spain trying to be able to catch a ship out. So it was great to have this different worldview of a scope so large. Normally with historical fictions, we're just focused solely on just this one protagonist and seeing the struggles of six, seven different members and being able to sympathize and and be invested in each one of their stories, I think is a rare thing. So would you say that historical fiction is a favorite genre of yours? Yes, definitely. I love historical fiction. <laughs> so why historical fiction specifically? I love history. I was almost a history teacher. I just find it intriguing to know, you know, what has happened in our past. And fiction just kind of gives it that spin that keeps you really interested. It keeps it fun. I don't want to say fun. Maybe that's not the right word. Hmm. I don't know. I just really like it. You know, we all have our different tics. Like, I'm not really into sci-fi because it's too out there for me. And this is just enough where it's seeped in reality that has that spark of fiction. All right, well, thank you. So do you know if this book is in the library? I don't think it is, but I'm gonna tell Miss Martin to put it on her list for next year. That's a good idea. But I did just read The Personal Librarian, which is at our library, and that is a historical fiction, and that was also really good. Hmm. All right, well. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. The Central Novella will return in a short moment. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy, and thank you for listening to this podcast. Today we have with us Miss Casey Hale. What book have you brought to recommend today? The book that I've brought for you is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. Can you give us a short brief summary of what the book is about? Yes, so uh, The Glass Castle is um, a nonfiction story. Um, it's about the uh, life of Jeanette Walls when she was a child. Um, her parents moved around quite a bit. She comes from a very dysfunctional family. Um, her dad is a pretty bad alcoholic and her mom's kind of a very free spirit um, and it just follows her life and what it is like living with two very unstable parents um, and how she grows up in spite of that upbringing. What message did this story bring you after reading it? I think it really talks a lot about resiliency um, and, the able, and the ability to overcome uh, any struggle that you face throughout your life. Why did you like the book? I liked the book because I really liked 
how honest Jeanette was with her readers. I'm sure it was very difficult to write about the things that she did. Um, and I just really connected with her and the relationship she had with her siblings um, and how she was able to still make something really meaningful out of her life despite her childhood. Why would you recommend this book to teenagers in particular? I think because everybody goes through their own struggles. I mean, they may not be as, as uh, crazy and unstable as Jeanette's, but um, I think she provides some good insight on just how to really overcome um, and also kind of understand when other people are struggling in your life that you care about. Um, and not only understand them, but also make that tough decision when you need to walk away from them sometimes. Is there anything else you would like to add about the book that you enjoyed particularly? Um, my favorite part of the book is really the opening scene. Um, I think she does a really good job of hooking the reader right away. She talks about how she severely burned herself when she was a really young girl because she was making herself hot dogs because her parents a lot of the times did not cook for the kids. Um, and I think it's a, a really powerful scene to just show how um, you know crazy, unstable her childhood was. Can you find this book in the library? Yes, you can. And uh, many classroom teachers have it in their library. The Central Novella will return with your next guest shortly. Please stick around and continue listening. We promise we'll bring you more content and good books. Welcome back to the Central Novella. I'm Izzy Martin, and I'm here with Alicia Crow and Kevin Parsons. We are going to do a couple more interviews in this episode and, you know, just try to see where we go book wise. So, Mr. Parsons, tell us about your favorite book. Well, that's not what you asked me to tell you about. You said tell you about a book that I would recommend. Well, now, which you, one are we doing? Tell you about the, the book you, you recommend. Okay, the book I would recommend today, anyways, is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So what is, what is the book about? You're not going to ask me to spell that? It's, um, <laughs> it, it's a, a, a fantasy novel, and I've always been a fan of fantasy, uh, that takes place in this fictional country uh, of Orisha. Um, and in this kingdom, they have outlawed magic. There's like a certain, a certain group of people that have magical powers. Uh, and if, you, if your magical powers are, are ever exposed, then th this king has you executed. Um, they think that they are you know, a, a bane to this country. Um, and there is a, a, a princess has a servant who touches some like weird scroll, some ancient scroll. And that touching that scroll awakens the servant's magical powers. And so the king has her executed, and the princess is like, oh my god, you know, that was one of my best friends. So she steals the scroll and runs away and finds this, like, secret rebellion of all these people that are, have their powers awakened. Um, and they're going to use this scroll to, like, spread it around and, and awaken as many of these, they call them the magi, uh, as they can. Um, and I love it because, like... I, fantasy is so white and so male. Like uh, people talk about Lord of the Rings being so great, and yeah, I, I guess it's good and everything. But it's like six white dudes go on a journey. They've got like elves and dwarves and orcs, and they happen to all just be white and male. Uh, it just seems so crazy to me. And this story has a uh, the main character, the protagonist, isn't even the princess. They hate princess stories. Uh, it, it's this this girl that her powers have been awakened. So we've got two major characters that are female. And then the, the, one of the, the, the girl magi, her brother is going on the, on the journey with them too. Um, and it's, it's so cool to have the, this female protagonist and it's a very African themed story. Um, the author is from Nigeria. And so there's a lot of Nigerian and Yoruba mythology in there. Even the, the name of the country, the Orisha. Orisha is like the, uh, the ancient Yoruba word for, uh, for, for great spirits. Uh, and it talks about the sky mother. So we see a lot of, a lot of cool African mythology uh, peppered in this, it, what, what, in other, any other West book would just be a basic fantasy tale. You know, we've got some a headband of heroes. Uh, they've got a magical item, and they're going on this this epic adventure to to overthrow some evil king. Uh, it's just such a such a cool story. So, would you say that it's really difficult to find a lot of representation in media? Uh, it's getting easier. Um, I think fantasy has always been problematic, but I think I think honestly, just in the past two years. We're seeing a, a major shift where we're, we're getting a lot more representation. Um, fantasy has had, oh, we, there was Graceline a few years ago, which is an awesome book. Uh, Red Queen is a good book. Um, we've seen a shift to see uh, more female representation of media in, in, in fantasy. 
Um, but black representation has always been been very low in fantasy. Uh, I know there was a an Afrocentric, I think it was called an Afropunk role playing game that came out uh, just a couple years ago. So we're seeing growth, definitely seeing growth, and it's it's cool to see a, a really good book like this come out. So what's the overall message of the book? Would you say? Oh man, fantasy messages are always sort of generic. Like you you control your destiny. You know. Um, it, it's always important to stand up for what's right, even when you're the minority. Um, the, the just basic fantasy messages, you know. It's really it's just a good adventure, you know. That's what I like about it. I just want to see these these underdog heroes go on this this epic adventure. So sometimes it's not about like the overall message. It's just sort of like the like the good adventure. Yeah, it's fantasy good. I think is more escapist. I mean, there are fantasy stories that have like a, a lot of meat to them, um, but I think generally fantasy is just sort of escapist. You know, the the we we know Earth. We we live Earth. It's not it's not exactly exciting here. We don't have magic and cool adventures. We've got politics and COVID. Um, so I think fantasy is a good escape. Yeah, no, that's that's a, that's fair. That's fair. Um, are there any other fantasy books that you would recommend that kind of fall in a similar category? Or um, This one I, I has started, a, it, it's a series now, and the sequel to it is uh, Children of uh, Virtue and Vengeance, I think. Um, so this one's growing, and, and Tomi Adeyemi is probably a, an author worth watching over the next few years. Um, and I just, fantasy in general, if you, if you search minority fantasy authors, I, th- I think there's a lot of growth. Um, I've got one on my, on my bookshelf over there that's uh, called Shadow Shaper, and it's like modern fantasy. So think like Harry Potter, where you've got people in the modern world with their magical powers. But it's a, the main character is a, uh, I think she is Latino and black and a woman um, in a modern fantasy setting. Um, so there, there's there's always lots of lots of new fantasy books coming out, and they generally are focused on YA. Um, but Children of Blood and Bone is one that I I personally have read, and I would definitely recommend it to anybody that's got any interest in fantasy. I don't know if you've read it, but it, um, another really good book that has a lot of representation in it is called We Hunt the Flame. It's it's more of like a like a Middle Eastern kind of fantasy, and it takes it, the lead is a strong female lead, and um, it really has like a lot of good cultural references and it's really good it's a um it's a two-part series i can bring it to you yeah yeah i think that's cool um we're getting a lot of just because fantasy is starting to get some representation i think we're it's fine we're finally getting some new fresh ideas you know we see so much of like uh greek influences you know greek and roman mythology influences in our in our fantasy and now that we're getting some minority representation we're getting to see african mythology and fantasy um polynesian mythology um which I, it's, it's enriching the whole genre of fantasy, I think. I agree, I think so too. All right, thank you for your time. Wait, can you find, you can find Children of Blood Bone in the library, right? I think so. Okay. I told her to order it last year or the year before. She did, I remember. So as long as you haven't stolen it, then they probably have it in the library. I have not stolen it. <laughs> not this time. Might though. Thank you. Please stick around and subscribe to their podcasts on the Central Digest. Hello, and welcome back once more to the Central Novella. As a little treat, Alicia and I are going to talk about our favorite books. Since I am currently the one who has the recorder, I'm going to go first. So, my book that I recommend to you is called Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. It centers around the story of the Trojan War from Greek mythology, but it's from Patroclus' perspective instead of the perspective of Achilles or Agamemnon or Odysseus. Um, it starts off when Patroclus is a child, and it starts off with him getting exiled from his kingdom for accidentally killing another small boy. Um, he then goes to the palace where Achilles' father is, and he becomes a trusted friend of Achilles. Then, of course, it goes around their relationship and the fact that they are very much in love, and then it centers to them being in the war, and then something happens that usually never happens in a book, is the main character, the point of view of the story, he dies towards about the end, and it the story continues as sort of his spirit watching Achilles grieve and 
then being unable to join Achilles in the afterlife because of the decision made by Achilles' son. And it's just it's just a really overall moving book, and I would totally recommend it um, if you just really want a good a good heartfelt story, like a good love story, or because because in the end, really their love does triumph all. And I just think it's a really really good book. I would read I would recommend any of the books by Madeline Miller, um, but I'm biased because she's my favorite author, and so that's my book. Um, Now over to Alicia. Hello, this is Alicia. My favorite book is called Scythe by Neil Shusterman. It is about these two teenagers named Citra and Rowan who are in a world where sickness, disease, and death no longer exist. And the only way you can die is when a scythe approaches you and points you out. Citra and Rowan are picked out by this scythe to become a scythe's apprentice, where they are going to be trained to essentially execute people. These teens must master the art of taking life, knowing the consequences and failures of losing their own, and they are fully prepared for this. Rowan wants to do it at first, Citra, not so much. She was mixed. She had mixed feelings. She did not want to kill people. But then as she started learning about poisons and how to use them, she became more excited about it. And she was more than prepared to become a scythe. But I'm not going to go any t- into any more detail about the book because I want you to pick it up and read it on your own. But I will recommend the sequel of the book. There are two other books called The Thunderhead and The Toll. You can get them in a series if you would like to read the whole series. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you can find both Song of Achilles and Circe by Madeline Miller in the library. If you want Scythe ordered... Ask Miss Martin, and she'll order the book for you. You can also find it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and of course, as an ebook or audiobook. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you guys later.